Hello, and welcome to Faith United Methodist Church virtual service for Christmas Eve, December 24th, 2020. I am Pastor Wanda. I want to begin by thanking, expressing my gratitude to those of you who sent in pictures of your nativity scenes or crushes at home. They are beautiful and with your help, uh, we are able to feature the, those pictures during the postlude at the end of our service today. So we hope that you hang tight and that hopefully you are able to see your crush during the postlude. Also, the links to the videos that we will be featuring in our service will be included in the description box for this recording. And finally, I want to invite you to go ahead and pause uh, this video and grab a candle, whatever candle you may have at your disposal, a tea light, or even a small lamp. And that at the end of the service, you may have it and you may light it or turn it on as together from the places that we may find ourselves as we watch this video, we join singing Silent Night. So again, welcome, and let us prepare our hearts and lift our lives up in worship to God.
Listen to the readings from Revelation and Isaiah. And the city has no need of sun or moon on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because of the abundance of the sea that shall be brought to you. The wealth of nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you the young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. There we go. Let us pray. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea. He was the long-awaited Messiah whose coming was prophesied. The same Jesus lives today in our hearts. He deserves our highest loyalty and total commitment. In Jesus Christ, our hope is fulfilled, our love is consummated, our joy is complete, and our peace is sealed. Rejoice, a Savior is born. Because Jesus Christ has been born in the world, people who walked in darkness now live in great light. Because Christ has been born in the world, the power to oppress and kill will not stand. Because Christ has been born in the world, we respond in power with angels, we sing to glory, we sing glory to God with the shepherds. 
we share the good news with Mary, we ponder the words of this night and the word that has come in the world. Emmanuel. Hi, kids. Happy Christmas Eve. I bet you know how many days there are till Christmas. I mean, everybody does. It's tomorrow. And I, I don't know if, if your family opens presents on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning, but there are probably presents under the tree. And maybe presents for your whole family, but I bet you know which ones are yours. And I hope you don't know what's in them, because that's really fun, I think, the surprise of it. I actually have some presents right here. I have two of them. There's this one. And this one. Now, if you could have one of these, only one, which one would you pick? Well, I'm thinking that if you're four or five years old, you're going to pick this one. Because it's kind of pretty. It looks nice. It looks like somebody went to a lot of trouble to wrap it, so there's probably something really good inside. This one, yeah, you th might think it's dog food or something. Because... It's just not wrapped very well. But if you're older than that, you're going to think, well, I think it's a trick. I think the best present is in here. And you would be right. So I'm going to open it up and see what's in here. Okay. We can make a mess when we open presents, right? Or not, you may be a very neat family. I don't want to uh, say you should make a mess if you don't. Oh my, look at this. It's Jesus. This is the best present, the best present of Christmas for anybody. It's Jesus. But why did they wrap him like this? Well, let's think about where he was born. He was born in a place for animals. Now, maybe it was like a barn. I don't know. The place for animals, that's where he was born. And after a baby's born, you need to put them somewhere, right? Unless you're going to hold them all the time. So they found a manger to put him in. And a manger is like, it's like a thing that stands about that, well, you know, stands on the floor, not too high so that the animals can reach it because it's got food in it, which might be hay or something. So it says that they wrapped him in cloth and put him in the manger. So that's how we think of Jesus, be, Jesus being born. And we know that he's going to be a king someday. So that seems like a really strange way to start out. Um, to me, it shows that you can't always tell what something is when you look on the outside of it. Like book covers, right? Sometimes you can't tell if the book is good or not until you actually read it, right? Um, how about a candy bar? Now, you might think all candy bars are good. Sometimes I do. But they're not all the same. You can't tell till you open it. And then there's people. Oh, my. Sometimes we just see a person and we think, oh, that person is like that. But we really don't know until we get to know the person. So um, the outsides of things don't really tell us anything. I asked my husband to buy some figs at the grocery store. And we both like them a lot. They didn't have the kind we usually get, so he got a different kind. Well, I tried it. I mean, it looked good. It was a fig. It was awful, really awful. I'm not going to eat any more of those. He couldn't tell when he bought it. It's like that. You can't tell from the outside how good something is on the inside. And in most cases, things are better than you think they are. So let's remember that Jesus was the absolute best present at Christmas time. I hope that you have a really great Christmas. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, I thank you for all these kids who are watching. I pray that their Christmas is happy, even though it's going to be so different from other Christmases. We thank you for blessing us, even when there's bad stuff going on in the world. In Jesus' name, amen.
The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken on as day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from the time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. O holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, Oh, hear the angel voices, O oh, night divine, O oh, night when Christ was born, O oh, night divine. divine led by the light of faith serenely beaming with glowing hearts by his cradle we stand so led by light of a star sweetly gleaming here came the wise men from Orient land. The King of Kings lay thus in lowly manger in all our trials, born to be our friend. Fall on your knees, O oh, hear the angel voices, O oh, night divine, O oh, night when Christ was born. Oh, night divine, oh, night, oh, night divine, fall on your knees, oh, hear the angel voice. Oh, night divine, oh, night, when Christ was born, oh, night divine, oh, night, oh, night. 
light divine. The gospel lesson is from Luke chapter 2, 1 through 4. In the days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world shall be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinus was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that, in that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth laying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on, on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and keep this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in the manger. When they saw this, he, they made known that he had been told them about the child. All of them who heard it were amazed and what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jordan, for the reading of the word just now. Would you all join me in an attitude of prayer? Gracious God, we would make room for you this night of all nights. Dear Lord, room in our minds and hearts, room also in our life together. Let your word be born in us anew, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, your splendor shines in us and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Why does God come to us as a baby? Why does he come to us at all? Henry Nouwen, a Dutch Catholic priest, once wrote, Jesus came to reunite, to heal, to form bonds, to reconcile. In his book titled Jesus, a Gospel, Nouwen writes, God says, I love you with an everlasting love. And Jesus came to tell us that. God loves us, whatever we do. If that's true, he writes, these few years that we are in the world, we are set to say in the midst of our life, yes, I love you too. The God who loves us is a God who becomes vulnerable, dependent in the manger and dependent on the cross. A God who basically is saying, are you there for me? I recently came across an essay that spoke about empathy. Now, believe it or not, I connected it um, or felt it spoke to me about the nativity reading that we heard from Luke today. What called my attention, however, is that the author defined empathy as the capacity and activity 
of understanding the experience of the other. She writes, when I speak of capacity, I am speaking of the ability to comprehend or enter into the experience of another. When I speak of activity, I am, of course, referring to actually entering into another's story. She adds, to have empathy with another is not simply to believe what that person says, but to feel along with that person, to participate in that person's experience. Thus, to take an empathetic stance towards another means that I am able to transcend myself and my own experience in order to enter into the experience of another. She points out that the most obvious example of empathy in the New Testament is Jesus. Using the words of early century father and teacher of the Christian faith, Irenaeus, who said, he became as we are in order that we might become as he is. She makes the point that in the birth of Jesus, Jesus empathizes with human experience because he himself is human, but because he is still the son of God. He is also the presence of God in human experience. Jesus, she says, is in effect God empathizing with human experience. Hebrews 4 verses 14 and 15 read, since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we have not a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Through Jesus, God enters into human experience. God experiences our joy, our accomplishments, our relationships, but also our suffering, our pain, our disappointments. In her essay titled Empathy and the New Testament, Ann Jervis writes, Jesus completes and fulfills the demonstration of God's empathy for humankind. By being God's Messiah, the Christ, Jesus embodies God's empathy. Jesus Christ teaches and demonstrates that the kingdom of God provides an environment where sin, disease, and death those great enemies of humanity can be defeated. In the kingdom of God, sins are forgiven, sickness and deformity are healed, and there is resurrection and eternal life. In today's gospel reading, we hear the nativity account. We hear of a mom giving loving ministrations to her baby wrapping him in bands of cloth. We hear of the humble origins of Jesus' birth. It was, not, it was not in a palace. It wasn't even in a home. There was no room for him, but only in a manger. And as we hear of that humble setting, we also read a little bit more along the story of yet another angelic announcement of Luke telling us once again, sharing in this pattern an amazing announcement that was bringing good news. And he chose, he, this angel chooses as their heralds, shepherds who were grazing their sheep out on the fields. These are persons of humble means as well. They weren't princes or, or holding any offices. 
they're going about their day to day. And to them in that place, in their ordinary lives, an angel comes with an amazing message of good news. We heard that as Jordan read for us Luke 2, but I will read again verses 10 to, through 12. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. The same God who had created the world and everything in it and declared that it was good, the same God who set up a plan to reconcile and restore us the moment after the fall, the God who pursues us still wanting to be in relationship with us and yearning that we wish the same, is the God that came to us in a manger. God came as a baby, entered human history in order to bridge the chasm of sin and death and show us how much we meant and still mean to him. This Christmas is a very different Christmas. But I invite you to see it as an invitation to remember God's empathy for humanity, for you and for me. God desires an ability to know us as we know, to love as we love, to teach us to know as God knows and love as God loves. That is the good news for all people. He came to know, but also so that we may know that everything about us is important to God that we are loved and cherished, so much so, that God could not bear the distance that sin and death brought, but long ago set a plan of salvation and came after us in Jesus. The great gift of Christmas, at least I invite you to see it that way this year, is God's empathy for you and for me. And thanks be to God for that. At this time, I invite you to take a moment and go ahead and name or think about the things that you are grateful about or for. To name the places where you have experienced God's grace and God's joy. To go ahead and Open your hearts to God, knowing that where you are right now, as you watch, as you join, God is in our midst, very much ready and able to minister to our lives in the way we need to receive from God today. Let us pray. Glory to you, O God for the good news of great joy that you give to all people. Thank you for Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who lived among us and now reigns on high. Thank you for his light that shines in the darkness. With the angels, we sing praise to you, celebrating your glory in all the earth, in the Son given to us, and in your promised salvation. On this Christmas Eve, from the places we watch and join together at this moment, we pray for your church in every place that we may make known to others what has been told to us about this child. Help us to bear Christ's light in every place of need. 
Draw near to those who spend this night apart from community, travelers and those far from home, people who live alone, one who waits in a hospital room, one who sits in a prison cell, one who is working deep in the night, one estranged from family and friends. Comfort those who are poor and vulnerable, the child at risk, the homeless on the streets, the family that is hungry, and those contending with prejudice and scorn. Restore those who have lost faith, lost hope, or simply lost their way. End the hostilities and wars we construct by ushering in the endless peace of your design. Establish your reign of justice and righteousness. You are the Lord of hosts who with seal will do this through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And God's people say, Amen. At this time, as I prepare to offer the benediction, I invite you to go ahead and take the candle, the tea light, the small lamp that, that I asked you to have ready at the beginning of the service. And that as we come together tonight in spirit, in heart, as we light our candles, as we turn on our lamps, let us know that we are not alone and that this day we come together and join in the lyrics that will appear momentarily on the screen. The words to Silent Night. Let us go ahead and light our candles. Friends and family of Faith United Methodist Church, may the love of God enfold us, the joy of Christ encompass us, and the Holy Spirit encourage us as we wait in hope for Christ to come again. And from your family and friends in Faith United Methodist Church, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs>